Today I'm revisiting a job that I installed in December last year and since then we had quite a few very cold snaps. So I'm very excited to find out how well this unit has performed. By the end of this video we will know the running cost of this unit, the efficiency of this unit and we'll also explore the ways the client is going to drop his running costs even further. Before we start I want you to play a little game with me. Leave a comment below with your prediction of the cop of this unit for the last three months, so coefficient of performance. Now I'll give you a little hint. The average temperatures in this area are around 5C, but we had a really cold December and January this year, so maybe those averages are slightly lower. Also, when we installed this unit, I left it at the heat curve of 0 0.8, which is quite high. It's about 45 degrees C when it's minus 2 outside. Armed with this information, I can see some of you are already leaving comments. Thank you very much and let's get started. So the main reason why we are here today is to fit a water softener. And what a great chance it is to talk to the customer, Mr. Brian, about his experience with the heat pump so far. I've got some questions about uh, the heat pump we installed in December. Okay. How has the experience uh, been with the heat pump? You've had it for three months now. Um, it's working amazingly well. I'm very surprised how good it is compared to the gas boiler. I didn't think it could ever replace a gas boiler, but it does. You had a modern condensing boiler, right? Yeah. What's the difference in using a gas boiler and a heat pump? It's a lot easier. There's nothing to do, nothing to touch, nothing to adjust. Whereas with the gas boiler, I was always going in and tweaking it all the time. So you say that running it with the heat pump is more comfortable? Yeah. Okay, it's, that's... It's a more even temperature throughout the building. Okay. Whereas we had hot spots before. We had those really cold snaps in. Uh, you missed the December one because we were installing it when we finished installing the that snap just finished, right? Yeah, just... But we had really cold snaps in January. Yeah. And how, 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 I think for one week we had what temperatures minus seven, minus eight minus at night? Minus seven nearly every night. Yeah, yeah, and the daytime was what was it? probably around zero, right? Just up to zero, yeah. Free how minutes. did the heat pump perform? Remarkably well. Yeah? Yeah, I was very, very pleased and surprised. And we checked, you've got a smart meter. Yeah. So we were looking at uh, consumption. When we, when we arrived this morning, that was what, zero degrees, and we saw 2.5 kilowatt consumption on that unit, which is quite a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's an unusual situation here, because when we turned the heat pump off, it went down to 1.4, right? Yeah. One kilowatt, 1.1 1 .1 kilowatt consumption at this house. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> My son is a computer geek. And uh, he's got a lot of stuff running in that one room. That must be 10 computers running, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't need any heating there, does Not does at all, he? no. The, the radiator's off in there. <laughs> so that's weekly use of the computers, right? Yep. We know that there's a lot of skepticism about heat pumps. What would you say to people that uh, say that heat pumps don't work in old buildings? Or what would you say to people that are on the fence about going with the heat pump or a gas boiler? I think if you've got all the insulation that you need in the building, it's very competitive. Probably everyone wants to know also the running cost of the unit. We've got that smart meter so we could see that on the very cold days you would pay around what, 10? About 10 pounds a day. Sometimes a bit more? Yeah, sometimes a bit more. Depends on the outside temperature. So if we take that computer room that gets probably 30-40% of the At energy least. use, right? Yeah, so Possibly more. <laughs> So on a cold day, you will spend six pounds on a heat pump, yeah. more or less, right? Yeah. Okay, so that gives us an idea of the running cost, which would be what, 150, 180 pounds a month for, for a fully detached bungalow that has what, we've got two bedrooms here? Two and bedrooms. A two bedrooms and a, what, 70 square meters, right? Yeah, just over. A lot of people are also worried about noise coming from the heat pump. And your heat pump is just next to the window to where the kitchen is, the kitchen yeah. window, right? Can you hear it? No. What about at night time? Because I know your hot water comes at night. Yeah, no. Nothing at all? Never, even standing in the kitchen, right close to it, I can't hear it. Okay, so... You've got to go outside, and even outside, up close, it's not that noisy at all. Okay, so that's another myth. Busted. Yeah. <laughs> no noise whatsoever, I right? I was quite surprised, because I thought with that big fan, it would make a lot of noise, but it doesn't. Now, coming back to running costs, we know that you intend to slash them. Hope so, yes. Hopefully by half, if not yeah. more. How, how are you doing that? 
uh, going on to the uh, new rate from Octopus, which is we'll do it at about 10 pence overnight, almost all of the night. And we've got the battery system as well, which will also benefit from the, the lower rate charging overnight and then helping to run the house during the day. How big is the battery? Uh, 6.5. 6.5, so M Michael will run it down in about, what, two hours? Yeah, <laughs> probably. You need a bigger battery, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if you guys have any questions to Brian, I know he watches my videos, just leave the comment below, below this video, and yeah, Brian I'll, will answer, I'll try right? I'll answer anything they've got. We're in the hallway and this is our main controller unit and on that unit we are setting the most important settings for the system and the most important setting for a heat pump is a weather curve or a heat curve. The concept is that the unit will react to the external temperature and adapt this flow temperature accordingly and with heat pumps as well as with gas boilers. Uh, the lower the flow temperature in the system the higher the efficiency so we want to keep that temperature as low as possible. You can set the heat curve on this unit manually, but in this very instance, I did something else. I've been testing what's called an auto-adaptive curve. The unit will change the heat curve depending on how the inside of the property reacts to a given flow temperature. So, for example, if the unit is struggling to reach the temperature inside at a given heat curve, it will raise it. Also, if it reaches the temperature too quickly or overshoots the internal temperature, it will drop that heat curve. And the reason why we've put auto-adaptive heat curve here, because uh, I believe when you use auto-adaptive heat curve, you'll probably sacrifice the efficiency a little bit. Usually, when we design the system, we know what flow temperature it should be run at, and we know what heat curve to choose. What I normally do, I choose a lower heat curve, and only when the customers complain, I tell them how to raise the heat curve. In this case, I actually set a higher heat curve of 0.8, and left it on auto adapt. Reason being, Brian, who lives here, is an elderly gentleman and he's got a son uh, who has some health issues. So I did not want to test my theory on them. I did not want them to be cold. That was the last thing I wanted. So I was quite happy to sacrifice a little bit of efficiency and use that auto adaptive heat curve. In case the heat curve I left on was too low, the system would have raised it. What has happened here, we're gonna know in a second when we go into the unit and we see at what heat curve it has actually settled. And we can see the heat curve is at 0 0.54, which is lower to what we set it to. So before we go into the results, it's worth mentioning uh, the running cost as we would compare it. People, most people compare heat pumps to gas boilers. And now the ratio between one kilowatt hour of electricity and one kilowatt hour of gas is around 2.7, maybe three, uh, 10, 12 pence per, per kilowatt hour of gas and maybe 30 to 35 pence per kilowatt hour of electricity. Which means that 90% efficient gas boiler will be comparable in running cost to a heat pump that runs at 2.5, 2.6 coefficient of performance. So anything above that figure will mean this unit is cheaper to run than a gas boiler it replaced. So for the month of February, the working figure is 4.1 or a cup of 4.1 or that the unit had efficiency of 410%. So we are way above the ratio where it's comparable to gas. We are way cheaper. But this is just February. Let's see how it performed over the last three months. And you have to remember, those were the coldest months of the year. So the total working figure for December, January and February, so three months, is 3.8. We can also check the efficiency of the unit on hot water. So for the month of February it's 3.0 for hot water and overall in last three months it's 3.4. But what's worth remembering is that the weather is gonna only get warmer now so the scope or seasonal coefficient of performance or average performance throughout 12 months most likely will go up. So this setup will be running at around 4, maybe 4.2 scope. When it comes to running cost, I think we'll have to do another video once the overnight tariff that's cheaper is in place and solar PV are in place, then we will know how cheaply those systems can really be run. Did you get your predictions about the efficiency of this unit right? 
I hope this video helped you understand a little bit more about heat pumps and I hope it explains that they do work well in UK buildings, in UK climate, if installed and designed and commissioned correctly. If you are looking for a heat pump installer in your area, go to the Heat Geek map and look for a Heat Geek installer there. I will leave a link in the description of this video. Now, before you go, I want you to do one more thing for me. Click on this thumbnail to watch the video from the installation of this heat pump.